In this video I'll be going over converging lenses and certain practice problems. So for this first practice problem we are told that an object is placed 20 centimeters in front of a converging lens with focal length of 10 centimeters and we are asked where is the image formed and is it real? So I've drawn this to make this easier to see. So we have our object right here. I'll label it object and it's 20 centimeters in front of this converging lens that I've drawn right here and so this 20 centimeters is the distance from the object to the lens so that's called P and we are told that the focal length of the lens is 10 centimeters so this point right here it's called the focal length and that is equal to 10 centimeters. Now that we know that we can solve this problem. So the equation that we need to use to solve this problem is 1 over p plus 1 over q equals 1 over the focal length. Okay so we know what p is. p is 20 centimeters so 1 over 20 we don't know what Q is. That's the image and we're looking for the image so that's what we're solving for. So anyway we can write 1 over Q equals and we know the focal length is 10 centimeters. So now what we want to do is we want to solve for Q. So one thing that we can do is we can write this as decimals. So 1 divided by 20 that is 0 0.05 and I'll keep the 1 over Q here and 1 divided by 10 is 0 0.1 so in order to isolate this 1 over Q on one side we subtract 0 .05, 0 0.05 from 0 0.1 and that will give us 0 0.05 so 1 over Q equals 0 0.05 all I did was I moved this over to this side so now we want to solve for Q. So what we can do is we multiply Q by this 0.05 and that will give us Q times 0.05. So now what we want to do is isolate the Q and if we divide the 0.05 by on this side and this side we get a Q of 20 centimeters. Now that we found Q, we know where the image is formed and we know if it is real or not. So because it is a positive Q that we calculated here, we know that it forms on the right hand side of the converging lens. And we also know that it is a real image because it is a positive value. If this Q turned out to be a negative value, then it would have formed on the left hand side, on the same side as the object and it would have been a virtual image. So since it's positive, we know it is a real image and it forms 20 centimeters to the right of the converging lens. So I'm going to write that down. Where is the image formed? 20 centimeters to the right of the lens. Is it real? Yes because it is a positive value. So now I'm going to actually draw the ray diagram here for this image because it'll help you understand what's going on. But first what I need to do is determine the magnification of the image because if we don't know the magnification we can't really draw it. So just let me erase this really quickly. So the formula we need to use to find the magnification is minus Q over P. So we know that Q is 20 and we know that P is also 20. So 20 divided by 20 we know that's 1 and we multiply by this negative so it's minus 1. So we know that the magnification of the image is minus 1. So the negative means that the image is inverted. So that's why we needed to calculate 
the magnification and also because we need to determine how big it is. So because it's a 1, that means it's the same size as the original object. So the image is the same size, but it's inverted, which I will show what that means in a second. So I'm going to draw the ray diagram here, just so this is easier to see. So it should form about the same uh, length from the lens as the object. So let's say about there. And I'll draw the second ray. So it passes through that focal point. And then it comes through here. And where these two lines intersect, these two rays intersect, that is where the image will form. And we know since we have a negative magnification value that it will be an inverted image. So it'll look like this. It'll be upside down. And we know that it'll be the same size as the original object because the magnification is 1. So it's the same. So that's what the image will look like. Now let's do another problem. Let me just draw it and erase all this and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've drawn out this problem and uh, we can start it. So it's the exact same problem except the object is placed closer to the lens. So it says an object is placed 5 centimeters in front of a converging lens with focal length of 10 centimeters. So the only thing that's changed is the distance from the object to the lens. So that is now 5 centimeters. So now it's inside the focal length, which is right here and right here. So that's going to change where, how, where and how the image is formed. So first what we can do is write out the formula again. And we put all our numbers in. So we know that P, the object, the distance from the object to the lens is 5 centimeters. So 1 over 5 plus 1 over Q, which we don't know, and 1 over the focal length, which is the same, which is 10 centimeters. So I'm not going to solve this. I'll just show you the answer because we've already done that before. So Q equals, when you rearrange this and solve for Q, it gives you negative 10 centimeters. So because it's negative, that means the image is going to form on the left-hand side it also means that the image is virtual, so it's not real. So we know that the, where is the image formed? It's formed on the left hand side. And it is formed 10 centimeters from the lens. And is it real? No, because it is a negative value, which means it is virtual, not real. Okay, so now I'm going to determine the magnification in order to draw the ray diagram. So the formula for magnification is minus Q over P. So our Q is 5 centimeters, oh, not our Q, our Q is minus 10 centimeters, sorry. So that'll give us 10 centimeters on the top because these negatives will cancel and the object's distance is 5 centimeters. So 10 divided by 5, you know that's 2. So 2 times magnification. So that means it'll be twice the image will be twice as big as the object was. So so we know it'll form on this side. It'll form 10 centimeters away. So it'll form right on the focal point, or the focal length. So if I drew this, it would form right here. It would be double the si size. I'm really bad at drawing this. So it would form like that. It would be double the size, and it would be to the 10 centimeters to the left of the lens. So if I were to draw the rays for this, it would look like this. So this ray would go through the lens, it would go like that, and then this one would go right through the middle, just like so. And 
and write the arrows pointing this way. But this time it's behind, so we can write these arrows, these like dash lines, to indicate that it it is um, forming behind. And some more dotted lines over here. This doesn't look very good, but this is how you're supposed to do it, or how you're supposed to indicate uh, how the image forms. So the image is two times large and it's behind, it forms behind the object, and it is a virtual image. So typically for these problems, if the object is outside of the focal length, the focal point, then the image forms on the right hand side and it is inverted. But if the object is inside the focal point, like this problem, then it forms behind and is usually larger.